uh, the form of today's proceedings and the form of which hearings will take. Uh, it's an opportunity for the board to take the formal decision that the meeting will take place remotely today. The board's policy is to have meetings in general terms on a hybrid basis, which means that people can attend physically or attend remotely. But for today's meeting, we don't have premises available which would allow us to hold the meeting on a hybrid basis. So uh, accordingly, the, the essentially the only option available to the board is that we have this meeting remotely. So I think you're being invited to agree that the meeting can be held on that basis. Thank you very much. And have we all agreed? Agreed. Agreed. Excellent. So the next part of today's meeting and hopefully a rather short meeting, I hope we'll be happy to hear, uh, is the apologies. And at this stage, I believe we have two apologies, Councillor Robertson and Provost Bissett, uh, who are not going to be present today. Uh, number three, declarations of interest. So members should declare any financial and non-financial interest that they have in any item of business at the meeting. I did find the relevant agenda item and the nature of the interest. Would Edward would like to declare any interest today? Nope, no one is going up. Uh, number four is the minute of the meeting of the licensing board held on the 23rd of November 2022. Has everybody managed to read the minutes and was everybody happy with the minutes or otherwise maybe? Agreed. 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 Thank you very much. So that takes us into the bulk of the meeting today, which is applications for non minor variations and variations to premises licenses. And for this, I will hand over to uh, Brian Douglas for now. Uh, thank you, convener, and good morning, everybody. Um, as the convener rightly points out, agenda item five this morning relates to four applications that have been submitted requesting non minor variations, and these concern uh, Bones Chemical Workers Social Club, uh, the Hippodrome. Falkirk Trice Golf Club and the Lauriston Bowling Club. So turning to um, the, the covering report, uh, I'll just summarise briefly. Members will be aware that the type of variation sought, uh, where the type of variation sought doesn't fall uh, within the defini definition of minor, then it falls to the board to make the determination. And this is the case for these four applications this morning. Now, due to the nature of some of the proposed changes, site visits for uh, the Bowness Chemical Workers Social Club, Falkirk Tries Golf Club and the Lauriston Bowling Club took place in advance of the board meeting this morning. In terms of the notification of the applications, as per our normal practices, all of our applications were notified to the various stakeholders and a notice was displayed on each of the premises and we have received confirmation that they've been properly displayed for the full period. Now, turning to the substance of the, the first application, which uh, was before members this morning, and that's the Bowness Chemical Workers Social Club. And for ease of reference, Appendix 1 uh, is on page 10 of the agenda pack, and this provides the details. And I believe the applicants with us this morning, Mr Doherty. Uh, so just to confirm that no objections or representations have been received in respect of uh, the proposed variations. Um, Brief summary of the, of the premises themselves. It's a registered club. It's a detached building with a parking located in, and it's in a residential area. The premises consists of a function suite, a members lounge, committee room and a lesser hall, a kitchen and a male and female toilets uh, and a cellar. Uh, in terms of the, the matter before members, there are eight proposed variations and I will just summarise them briefly for, for members this morning. So first up, um, to change the seasonal variations from the 31st of December each year for Hugman A party until 2am. Uh, you've got the Bowness Fair Festival each year open at 10 in the morning to give pipe band breakfast and refreshments. Um, you've got the Bowness Fair Festival uh, each year open at 8 o'clock in the morning to give breakfast and refreshments to invite to bands and visiting bands are allocated to sponsors to which uh, the social club <coughs> are. And, Variation number two is the addition of gaming to the list of approved activities within core operating hours. Uh, proposed variation number three, the addition of the following to the list of approved activities out with core operating hours. These include conference facilities, restaurant facilities, receptions, club, 
or other group meetings, recorded music, live performances, dance facilities and televised sport. Proposed variation number four, the addition of the following to the list of proved activities within and out with core operating hours, bar meals and indoor outdoor sports. Number five, the addition of explanations for events taking place out with core operating hours. Number six, the addition of the following to the list of other activities. The premises are used as a polling station on uh, election day and this requires the function hall and foyer and toilet areas to open early in the morning uh, prior to the commencement of core hours. Uh, this area of the premises have been the function hall with no bar for, uh, services before or during core hours. And in addition, the premises cater for prize giving, speakers nights, annual youth school, transition discos, charity nights, etc. Proposed variation number seven uh, relates to the access times for children and young persons and as detailed as follows. So from the existing, that's for the purpose of attending bona fide functions only when accompanied by an adult to proposed, children and young persons are allowed access to the premises for the purpose of attending bona fide functions such as a private function, bonus fair day, band display days, darts, tournaments, football events, etc., and must be accompanied by an adult. 6C remains the same. 6D, the times during which the children and young persons will be allowed entry. The existing, um, is children under nine years of age until eight o'clock, children nine to 15 years of age until 11 o'clock, young persons 16 to 17 years of age until the terminal hour, and the proposed changes to children and young persons when attending a bona fide function, bonus fair day, band display days, darts tournaments, football, etc., until the terminal hour. And 6E is parts of premises to which children and young persons will be allowed entry. Uh, the existing is new function room, toilets, and foyer and the proposed is all public parts of the premises, although I understand that the, the applicant may wish to address uh, members this morning in terms of a slight adjustment regarding access to the bar area. Now, the board's policy position in relation to considering the appropriateness of our premises in terms of children and young persons access has moved away from being prescriptive and members will be aware uh, that the new statement of licensing policy which was approved in December 2018 states that members will consider each application on its own merits assessing the following as part of the consideration and you'll see them following bullet points I'll just go over them briefly location of the premises nature of the premises and customer profile activities of the premises which would include gambling and TV sports, the food provision, location of toilets within the premises, location of bar services, entertainment and functions, specific provision for children such as play areas, children's menu and portions, and the ratio of seating to standing customers. And just to confirm, uh, as I mentioned earlier, a site visit was carried out by the board and the licensing standard officer and myself on the 30th of November uh, this year. And the final proposed variation is a change to the layout plan to update the part of the premises children and young persons can have access to. And then turning back to consideration of the non minor variations before members this morning, um, the consideration of the application will be in, in terms of section 30 of the Act. This applies and the board need to consider whether any of the statutory grounds uh, for refusal apply. And if none of them applies, then the board must grant the application. And if any of them applies, then the board must refuse the application. So the decision rests with the board this morning. Happy to take any questions members may have. Thank you. Thank you very much. Does any member have any question for Mr Douglas? Excellent. And is the applicant here today? Mr Doherty. Is that you, Mr. Docker? Three one seven. Uh, you're on mute, but we're not hearing. You're now on mute. Mr. Doherty, it might be uh, you're, we're still unable to hear you. Are you able to phone in? He's got 
I wonder, um, convener, if in the first instance, uh, Mr. Rockerty would be kind enough to try leaving the call and rejoining. Um, and then if that fails, I'll um, email Mr. Rockerty the instructions for the telephone. Thank you very much, Mr. Foley. OK, we're still waiting. We'll give them a minute before. Hello? Hello, Mr. Doherty. You hear me now? We can hear you now. Thank you very much for trying that. I can't. Sorry about that. Right, Sounds like no problem. It, it was the access to young children. Uh, it may be a bit confusing here with the plan. We'll, but, we'll come to that in a second, but, OK? Uh, so would, can you uh, to bear with me? Can you confirm you've received a copy of everything for today? Yes. Yes. Excellent. Uh, so the next stage as uh, we've had a report presented, we will now go with yourself uh, 
putting forward your your port report for yourself. Yeah. So you have your time to speak now. Right, OK. Uh, we're asking at question 7b, the children and young persons access to all areas. Well, this, is it, this doesn't include the bar area, obviously. Uh, it's just on the operating plan or the, the plans are sent to you. You see it all marked out. It's turning around and uh, showing like children's got to walk by the bar, but they won't be in the bar area. OK. And would you like to just go over the rest of it or are you happy with what's been read out by Brian? Yes, I was happy. Yep. Do any members have any questions for Mr. Docherty? Uh, Council Steinbank. Hi, Brian. Uh, thank you very much, much, Mr. Docherty. I think you just answered my question. Um, as the members who were on the site visit will be able to remember, um, the sort of bar area uh, going between the lesser hall and the members' lounge, it doesn't seem there's any seating, and there's also games machines, so it makes a lot of sense why that would just be an issue. Uh, that would just be an area where they go from the lesser hall to the members' lounge to sit down. So I was going to ask that question, but that was adequately answered. My only other question then would be in terms of monitoring potentially um, the extension of a young people's access, uh, what monitoring would be done in the members lounge area? Um, I can see how the function suite and sort of the lesser hall area will be well monitored because it's directly seeing it from the bar. I just wonder if you could elaborate on how you will be able to monitor the members lounge area. Like I says, any children or young persons that will be there will be with parents and they're also committed on, on duty all the time. So there would be no children walking towards uh, any bar area that because they'd be, they'd be monitored by commit. Thank you. Thank you very much. And any other members have any questions for Mr. Docker today? Nope. So we will. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Docker I will now go to the LSO. So Lindsay, would you like to add anything? Good morning. No uh, convener. I've got no comments to make. Thank you very much. And uh, Sergeant Omi, are you have you anything to add to from the police side? Morning all. No, I can confirm we processed the application and please Scotland get no adverse comment to make. Thank you very much. So based on information, I am minded to grant the application. Is everyone in agreement? Agreed. Agreed. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, so much Mr. Docherty, for your time and uh, thank you for bearing with us for the technical issues and calling in there. Thank you very much. I, I apologise for that. I'm not very good at these uh, things. It's, <laughs> that's you. enough. And we all uh, technology still is alien to most people. Yeah, it's enough. Huh? Yeah. That that's you all done with. Unless right. you want to say what is listened to the rest. Thank the board for the time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. Okay, so we will now go to the hippodrome, uh, which is Poker Council, and I'll pass it to Mr. Douglas to explain this. Uh, thank you, convener. Uh, yeah, so this is the second uh, non-minor variation before members this morning, and Appendix 2 uh, can be found on page 35 of the agenda pack. That provides the details for members' consideration. Uh, just to confirm that no objections or representations have been received in respect of this matter. Uh, the premises, uh, as a well-known uh, cinema, located in Bowness Town Centre and comprises of uh, public auditoria, a stage, bar, foyer and public toilets with an upper circle uh, toilets on the first floor level. The applicant proposes to increase the capacity uh, of the premises from 172 to 220. Uh, there is no change to the layout plan as the seats are already in place but not currently being used. Uh, the licence holder uh, intends to make use of the additional seating now and the current layout plan is attached, attached as an appendix to the report. So turning once again to the consideration of, of the application this morning, it's in relation to section 30 of the Act. This applies and the board need to consider whether any of the statutory grounds for refusal apply. And if none of them applies, the board must grant the application or if none of them applies, then the board must refuse the application. I'll rest with that, Kenina, unless any members have any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, before we go into any questions, is the agent present for the council today? Yes, Chloe Crawford from Hilburn Licensing uh, is. I'm here. Um, 
are you happy for me to proceed with my submissions? I will. Uh, I'm just going to ask if the members have any questions first, and then I'll come with okay. yourself. Uh, do any members have any questions for Mr. Douglas? Nope, so thanks very much. Uh, so, Chloe, it's over to yourself. Thank you. Thank you very much. As you've heard and can see from the papers, this is obviously a major variation application. Uh, you will no doubt be aware of the Hippodrome located in Bonest Town Centre. So this application seeks to increase the capacity from 172 to 220. The premises already have these seats in place on their existing layout plan and this application would allow them to make use of the seats. For the avoidance of doubt, the layout plans have not changed and there's no physical change to the premises. So as winner of the Best Cinema Experience in Scotland in 2019, this would provide them with significant sales opportunities. Um, so it's also worth noting, obviously, that there have been no objections or adverse rep representations to this application. So I'll keep this brief and I'm now happy to take any questions, but would otherwise ask you to approve the application on the terms sought. Thank you very much. Uh, members have any questions for? Uh, nope. And uh, Lindsay, have you got anything you would like to add? Thank you. No, no comments to make. Thanks. Thank you very much. And Sergeant O'Malley. Thank you. Yes, we processed the application and with no adverse comment to make. Thank you very much. So based on everything, I'm minded to grant the application. Is everyone in agreement? Agreed. Agreed. Excellent. Agreed. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming. So the nice one today is a uh, number three in the applications list, which is for Oak and Trace Golf Club, and to hand over to Mr. Douglas to put this forward. Thank you, convener. Yes, this is uh, the third non minor variation for members' consideration this morning, and you'll find um, the details in Appendix 3, which is contained in page 58 of the agenda pack, just to confirm that no objections or representations have been received in respect of this matter. Uh, turning to a brief summary of the premises, the premises operates as a registered club. As described in the Licensing Club Scotland Regulations 2007, premises is a golf club comprising of a bar area, a lounge, a restaurant area, kitchen cellar, professional golf shop, members locker area, a secretary's office and a conservatory viewing area. There are nine proposed variations and I'll just briefly summarise them for, for members. Uh, so the applicant proposes in the first instance to increase the approved operating hours for on sales uh, as follows. So you will see um, Currently, Monday through to, or Sunday rather, uh, through to, to Thursday, it's 11 o'clock in the morning to 11 o'clock in the evening. And the applicant proposes to change this from 11 o'clock in the morning to midnight. And there's no further changes proposed in terms of Friday and Saturday. And the hours proposed are within policy. In addition to this, the second variation proposed is the addition of an on sales facility during the following days and times, which is Monday through to Sunday. And that's 11 in the morning till 10 in the evening. And again, these hours proposed are within policy. Moving on to the next proposed variation, uh, premises will operate festivals as per the Falkirk Council Licensing Board annual festival policy. Of course, that was approved earlier this year, I believe at the August board meeting. Uh, for the addition of receptions, including weddings, funerals, birthdays, retirements, etc. to the list of approved activities out with core operating hours. Number five, the addition of conference facilities and outdoor drinking to the list of approved activities within and out with core operating uh, hours from, and you'll see the operating plan is in respect of the golf clubs and the, the courses playable earlier than the initial core hours. Often visiting clubs, members, competitors arrive and will have tea, coffee, soft drinks and snacks before playing. Committee meetings in winter are often at seven o'clock. Moving from that to the proposed proposal, which is uh, following activities may operate from seven o'clock daily and conclude prior to the premises terminal hour and the list includes conference facilities, restaurant meals for the purposes of breakfast, receptions mainly for the purposes of funerals, club or group meetings, indoor outdoor sports with golf played from daylight, televised sports, the designated outdoor drinking area will be used out with core hours for breakfast. The clubhouse will be used in general outside core licensed hours and will cease all operations prior to this terminal hour. Uh, variation number seven proposed the addition of the following to the list of other activities, uh, casino nights, children's parties, baby showers and craft evenings. And then moving to uh, variation number eight to change the access for children and young persons as follows. So you'll see from the table, uh, question six, six B, terms under which children and young persons will be allowed entry. So existing when attending a private function or having a meal whilst accompanied by an adult and two when participating in golf activities 
and proposed change is children and young persons permitted when accompanied by an adult for the purpose of participating in golf activities, attending a function, attending children's parties or having a meal. Uh, six C in the table, ages of children and young persons to be allowed entry. So existing one, children zero to 15 years of age and two young persons 16 and 17 years of age and the proposed changes zero to 17 years of age. 6D, times during which children and young persons will be allowed entry and the existing uh, conditions for meals or private functions, children zero to eight years of age, inclusive until nine o'clock in the evening, children and young persons nine to 17 years of age, inclusive until the terminal hour, and two for participation in golf activities, children eight to 15 years of age, inclusive until 9 p.m. And the proposed change to children and young persons attending for playing golf, attending a children's party or having a meal to be permitted until 10 p.m. and children and young persons attending an event function permitted until the terminal hour. And the final proposed variation of this part, 6E, parts of the premises to which children and young persons will be allowed entry and you see existing it's for attending private functions or having a meal in the function room and restaurant or for participating in golf activities uh, where you've got the permit holder, function room, restaurant, conservatory for, and then junior members in the function room, restaurant, lounge, bar and conservatory and that proposed change is to all public areas. Now, you'll see from the next part of the report uh, it reflects on the board's policy position in relating to the appropriateness of uh, the, the terms of access for children and young persons and how this changed following on from the introduction of the new statement of licensing policy approved in December 2018. And you will see uh, from the bullet points there all the considerations that members will have before them this morning. I can, can, I can go through it again if you wish. However, I have summarised in the previous report. Just bash on. OK, just to confirm that a site visit was carried out by the licensing board and the licensing standards officer to the premises on the 30th of November this year. Uh, proposed variation number nine is to change the layout plan to show the outdoor drinking area and changes to access areas for children and young persons. Once again, in terms of consideration for members this morning, section 30 of the Act applies and the board needs to consider whether any of the statutory grounds for refusal apply. And if none of them applies, then the board must grant the application. If any of them applies, then the board conversely must refuse the application. Convener, I'm happy to take any questions members may have. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr Douglas. Any questions from the board? No. And Mr Emsley, I believe you're the agent for this case. I am your convener. Would you like to add anything? Uh, put yourself forward. Uh, thank you. Uh, just to, to sort of give a little bit of background, um, the uh, following a visit from Mr Ross during the second um, lockdown, uh, the secretary went with, with Mr Ross went through the operating plan and generally this is about modernising it, tidying it all up and to make it sort of more compliant now with, with post-COVID regulations. Uh, outside drinking had been permitted and was used on occasional licences during the summer months um, uh, and environmental health and planning have been involved in that. Planning have made comment regarding the outside area and planning permission has now been applied for to have the external area uh, granted. Uh, and the, you know the, the premises has caused no issues uh, over that period of time. It's a well managed, well run facility uh, and would move your honours to grant. Thank you very much, Mr Emsley. Uh, do any members have any questions for Mr Emsley in regards to the Falkirk Trace Golf Club? Nope. Uh, so, would Lindsay, would you like to add anything here? Yeah, the premises are very well run and there are no issues with the premises, um, so there's no, no issues to make with it. Thank you very much. And Sergeant Omey? We process, process the application and we have no adverse comment to make. Thank you very much. Uh, so with that, I'm, uh, I'm minded to approve the application. Is everyone in agreement? Agreed. 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 Excellent. So we shall move to the next one. Uh, and I'll leave Mr Douglas to go over uh, Lorston Bowling Club. Uh, thank you, convener. Yep, so this is this is a final non minor variation for members' consideration this morning. And Appendix 4 can be found on page 81 of the agenda pack, and that provides further details. And I can confirm that one objection from a local resident uh, was received, and a copy of this objection was forwarded on to the applicant's agent. 
Turning to the description of the premises themselves, it is a bowling club that is situated within a residential area. It is a single storey uh, in composition and comprises of two lounge bars, a committee room, a kitchen, uh, stores and male and female toilets. And the applicant proposes seven uh, variations and these are as follows. I'll just summarise them for members this morning. So the addition of an off sales facility during the, the following hours. So you'll see Monday to Sunday in the table from 10 in the morning until 10 in the evening and the hours proposed are within policy. Number two, the addition of restaurant facilities to the list of approved activities, again within core operating hours. Three, the addition of bar meals and indoor outdoor sports to the list of approved activities out with core operating hours. Four, addition of a statement regarding activities taking place out with core operating hours. Five, the addition of the following to the list of other activities. So seasonal craft events held in the main lounge, line dancing, music rehearsals, children's dance classes and spirit tastings. Uh, turning to uh, this is number six and you'll see from the table and these are changes to the access times proposed for children and young persons in the premises. Uh, 6b the table terms under which the children and young persons will be allowed entry. So uh, at the moment uh, the existing condition children and young persons permitted whilst accompanied by an adult to proposed children and young persons permitted when accompanied by an adult for the purpose of attending a function, having a meal at a function or whilst participating in junior bowling games, spectating at bowling games or attending a children's dance class. 6c, ages of children and young persons to be allowed entry uh, and existing as children and young persons under 18 years of age, proposed is 0 to 17 years of age. 6d, times during which children and young persons will be allowed entry. So at present, it's when attending functions, children under five years of age until nine o'clock in the evening and children, young persons six to 17 years of age until the terminal hour. Uh, during the bowling season only, children, young persons under 18 years of age are permitted on the premises if playing bowls, but must vacate the premises by eight o'clock in the evening. Two, the proposed change, children, young persons attending for the purposes of a junior bowling match, having a meal or attending a children's dance class to be to be permitted until 10 o'clock in the evening. Children and young persons attending a function permitted until the terminal hour. And the final proposed change here, 6E, parts of the premises to which children and young persons will be allowed entry. And at present it's the function suite only with a capacity of 60 persons. And the proposed change is to the lounge function suite toilets and external licensed seating area. Uh, turning to the board's policy position in relation to the appropriateness of uh, access in terms of children and young persons and you'll see from the bullet points there the main considerations that the board members will have uh, in their minds this morning when considering uh, the matters before them again don't propose to go through them uh, it's there for you to consider and just to confirm once again that a site visit was carried out by the licensing board and the licensing standards officer on the 30th of november uh, 2022 uh, the seventh proposed variation is to amend the layout plan to show uh, an updated outside drinking area and you'll see that in the plans attached. Uh, CCT CCTV cameras, um, conversion of committee room to storeroom, uh, the installation of external door in the storeroom and additional access areas for children and young persons. Turning again to the consideration before members this morning, section 30 of the Act applies and if the board need to consider whether any of the statutory grounds for refusal apply, and if none of them applies, then the board must grant the application. And if any of them apply, then the board must refuse the application. And I'm happy to take any questions members may have at this point. Convener. Thank you very much, Mr Douglas. Do members have any questions for Mr Douglas? Uh, Mr Emsley, I believe that you, you should have a copy of the objection. I do have, yes. Excellent. Uh, and would you like to put forward your uh, side on for the bowling club and this is before we go to the objection okay um yeah so uh, very similar to Falkirk trice this is a, a tidy up of of uh, the license um the bowling club have been fortunate to be able to get grant funding during the pandemic and, and post covid period and they've been reinvesting that into the facilities and um, they've now made it a very modern uh, fresh facility as your members would have seen on last week's uh, visit uh, and this is really just a case of tidying it up to allow kind of uh, community projects and community activities to take place um, during this kind of non-season mainly um, of bowling uh, to try and make sure that the asset is utilised well for the members and for the community as best possible. Um, the uh, objection, I um, to give some background, there has been dialogue with the secretary at the bowling club uh, through from uh, 
August, September of this year, so uh, and into October as well. So there's been a continuous dialogue between the, the club and the, the resident in question. So um, my proposal, my suggestion would be that if members were minded to ask the LSO to work with both the club and the resident to seek a conclusion. Um, the club have been in dialogue with Falkirk Council Planning, they've taken legal advice, they've been in touch with the environmental team regarding the, how they operate. Uh, and I think that that I think a solution is, is certainly within reach. It's been very cordial, the conversations that have taken place between the resident and the members club, and I would expect that continue and would maybe suggest that Lindsay would be well placed to um, work with all parties to reach a satisfactory so solution, Your Honours. And based on that, I would move to Grant. Thank you very much. Do Regarding the initial proposal, uh, Mr. Rimsley, first of all, are you okay with members getting a copy of the objection uh, uh, sent yes, to them? Yes, absolutely, no issues. Excellent. So, if uh, Jack, if you can please do that. Uh, and while that's been done, uh, uh, do any members have any questions for Mr. Emsley uh, or regarding the application? Uh, also, the uh, it should have now arrived in your link box. Which is, we'll take a few more moments just to read that. If members can indicate when they have read that, please. Has everyone had a chance to read it? Yeah. I can see lots of nods, so we shall progress. Uh, does anyone have any questions for Mr. Emsley in regards to the application? Councillor Binney and Councillor Balfour, are those legacy hands or are they questions? Uh, the questions. OK, Councillor Binney. Uh, th thank you, Katrina. Uh, I was reading the objectors letter and it spoke about taking away the high screening and it was put in fencing. Um, can you tell me the reason for that? Um, because obviously the, the objector, his perception is that um, he's losing his privacy and obviously uh, the noise is carried more. Can you tell me the reason why that high screen was taken down? The Two reasons for it, first and foremost, the it's a, it was a hedge, it was a, 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 an excess of eight foot hedge. That hedge was starting route wise, was starting to damage the footpath around the perimeter and was becoming a safety issue. So the paving slabs were re rising and that had to be addressed. And secondly, is to, to allow better ventilation around the bowling green. So from, from you know, surrounded by houses and generally, you know, Bowling Green, the club will spend somewhere between eight and ten thousand pounds a year on ongoing maintenance of the green. And 
air is an important part of trying to let grass grow as part and parcel and sunlight. So it was twofold. First and foremost, health and safety, uh, and then secondly, because of potential long term damage that it could do to uh, the building surface itself. Um, it, you know, it, 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 I know as you said, it's a gentleman, it's a lady who's who's raised the, the um, objections. Um, uh, no, thank you for that. No, I'm pleased that uh, there's going to be further in engagement between uh, the club and this neighbour, this uh, gentleman. Is that your only question? We have our questions, Councillor Billy. That's that's me finished. My thank you, thank you. Hand still up that one. Hey, Councillor Balfour. Yeah, thanks, Convener. Um, you stated that the the hedge was over eight feet high. How wide was the hedge? I'm approximately saying it was about a foot and a half. So it was like a half. foot and a half to two foot. It's, it had been there. I mean, it, it, it will have been there for a significant period of time. And it's kind of a, a, a very high box hedge as part and parcel of that. Um, I think the challenge will be is, is the hedge was, was well within the boundary between. The, so, so beyond the hedge, there's another boundary towards the, the uh, residents. Um, fencing and the, the hedging isn't the boundary between them and the neighbour. There is a be the beyond that, so it was within their boundary lines. It wasn't the boundary between them and the neighbour. Right. Okay. But it was basically noise screening, um, which is well, no longer there. So I think I think it possibly for, for many years it will have started off as a small hedge. You know, maybe a hundred yeah. years ago, and, it, and has grown over time. And and whilst the, the club are, are sensitive to. Um, um, the, issue, the main issue seems to be is, is intrusion for the ladies' garden. Um, however, yeah. the ladies' garden has, it's about a hundred foot from the from the actual edge of the the, the boundary to the bowling club. So yeah. quite a difference. What, what's the distance between the ladies' uh, fence and the bowling club's fence? Oh, go up. I think there's a gap between. Yeah, there is about two to three foot gap. Okay. Um, and what height is the ladies' fence? It's it, the edge uh, of the club is high, and it and it goes down onto that. Um, you were breaking up there. Can you just say that again? So the elevate the elevation the, the the bowling club is 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 at the high level of of um, uh, Lauriston, so it looks down. Right. So it's a, it's a high level over. So so any anything moved away um, will will create visibility to the ladies' garden. Right, okay. That seems to be the biggest challenge. Is, um, is our policy. Yeah, I think. I mean, if they put if they put in a four foot fence and folk are just leaning on the fence looking over, I mean, to me, the easiest thing is put a higher fence in or put a bit along the top so they can't do that. Well, and then the, the, maybe even put uh, some screening against it as well to minimise the noise. So, I I, th I think there are solutions there. I, th I think to, just to highlight, the, the seating area is there is only used through bowling events and during the day. And it's probably fair to say that during this season, it will have been used and it, the seating area will have been used less than half a dozen times in the year. So it's not it's not a permanent, whilst the fixtures are permanent, the actual, uh, it's not a permanent um, um, use. It's not in permanent use by all bowling members. And it's an, on a rare occasion, it's just, and there's probably two tables closest to the actual clubhouse are, are the ones that are most frequently used. Um, but as I say, the club are, are keen to work with uh, the resident to find a satisfactory solution. Uh, the challenge comes when we go to higher fences is cost in planning uh, and that opens up a whole can of worms for other things. So we're trying to find a practical, reasonable solution that everyone's happy with. Yeah, I mean, I think you can go up to uh, two metres. Um, I think if it's, if it's away for the road, um, you can go up to two metres high. So uh, out, out with out my out with my area of expertise, but I'll take advice from from yeah. those who. I think, I think it's it's quite an easy an easy fix. I think there's solutions there, as you say. Um, it could be a relatively easy fix. Well, that, okay. I, that, that, that's why I, I I think you know the LSO in Lindsay. I think is probably best placed because it's possibly uh, uh, that the uh, the resident isn't aware that, that their services or that to to resolve those kind of things is available. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mr. Steinbank, is your question being answered because your hand was up for a while? Absolutely correct, Convener. Thank you very much. Councillor Kerr. Thanks, Convener. You remember we got a bit of background noise. That's that's the hotel staff cutting the grass. Uh, regarding the outside, wait a minute, wait a minute, Convener, wait a minute, wait a minute.
regarding the outside drinking area, that if my memory served me light right from uh, our visit, Mrs. Fife, that area has already got planning for and they're operating plan for drinking. So it's irrelevant whether they put a fence there or no, they've got planning for drinking in that area. Is that right, Lindsay? That's correct, Councillor, yeah. I, I think from the, the visit, most of the variations were from inside. Catering facilities, as Mr. Alexander explained, is to give somebody a role and sausage their own baiting in, in the morning before they play a game. Uh, they've already got access for children and young people on the function side. They were just want to add to the 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 lounge side. Is that correct, Mrs. Lindsay? Uh, Mrs. Fife? Uh, you were getting a Mrs. Lindsay there. Yes, Gainsley. Uh, I think I, I take on board with the.
OK, I think we're all back in. Uh, yes, we're all back here, so thank you very much for uh, waiting. Uh, we had a nice wee conversation in the meeting in the breakout room. Uh, based on all the information, uh, I'm minded to move the application. Is everyone else in agreement? Agreed. Agreed. I think, uh, thank you very much. Uh, so that is the Con end. Convener, convener yes. just before you. Uh, on uh, prize with it, Miss, Mrs Fife, along with Gordon and the committee liaise with the objector. Yes. To try and get a, a resolution. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Kerr. Uh, so we will now uh, wrap the official meeting up here. I, I do ask all members to remain as uh, Lindsay uh, does have a wee presentation to give to us all regarding licensing forum. But the official meeting is officially uh, is over. So everyone else can please leave. Thank you, convener.